After World War I, many Americans believed that participating in the war was a mistake for the U.S. and caused the country to nearly fall apart. It was often believed that the war caused the U.S. to fall into an economic depression because practically none of the countries that the U.S. gave loans to repaid their debt, causing the U.S. economy to suffer. The citizens of the U.S. did not want these post-war events to repeat themselves again and gained a new take on foreign affairs. This was known as isolationism which meant that the U.S. would avoid world conflicts and just focus on problems at home, as well as restricting international affairs in general. In the early 1930s, Japan invaded Manchuria, and the German government was building their arms supplies. In order to react to these warlike behaviors in Europe and Asia, President Franklin D. Roosevelt created a series of neutrality acts. The first neutrality act that was passed in 1935 stated that the U.S. would not export munitions to belligerent nations and also included that American citizens were not per permitted to travel on belligerent vessels. The following Neutrality Act that was created in 1936 was just an expansion of the 1935 Act, which enforced that munitions were not to be transported and loans would not be given out to any be belligerent nation. One of the main reasons why this act was included was to prevent Americans from being killed on a war vessel, looking back to World War I and the sinking of the Lusitania, which contributed to the U.S. entry in the war. In 1937, the next act was created and expanded on the previous acts. It forbade merchant ships from transporting arms to belligerents. This act also allowed the president to bar all belligerent ships from U.S. waters. In the creation of these first acts, the U.S. was attempting to avoid any interaction with foreign states. It was also included in the 1937 act that allowed for other countries to gain goods that they needed besides arms, as long as they followed the cash and carry basis. This meant that the country that purchased the goods would have to pick up the goods, pay up front, and take the goods back with them. This was a way for Roosevelt to assist Great Britain and France in the conflict against Germany without really saying it. They were the only two countries that had enough ships and money to follow through with the cash and carry act. It was also around the year 1937 when Japan felt like the U.S. was acting with hostility towards them, because after Japan invaded Nanking, the U.S. restricted the export of arms to Japan, and later the U.S. froze all of Japanese assets in the U.S., restricted oil exports, and merged the armed forces of the Philippines and the U.S. This was caused by Japan signing a non-aggression pact with Russia. However, at this point, the U.S. was not focusing on Japan and China as much as the conflicts that were happening in Europe and eventually this hostility that Japan was feeling from the U.S. led to the attack of Pearl Harbor, which was the main reason why the U.S. entered World War II. In March of 1939, Roosevelt acted too quickly by wanting to extend the cash and carry bases to munitions as well, but the country just was not ready for this kind of action and he was shut down. It was not until November 1939 when Congress allowed the cash and carry bases to be extended to munitions. This was taking another step forward in entering the war because the U.S. was now supplying munitions and arms to the countries that could afford it, mainly the Allied countries, and those supplies would be used to fight in the war, which had now begun. In 1940 was when the real changes began taking place. The U.S. allowed itself to aid the Allies through the London lease bases. This allowed the U.S. to lend supplies to the Allies and would let the payment be paid back at, in the future. Although long before this moment, it was obvious that the U.S. was siding with the Allies, at this point it was clear to everyone. The U.S. was aiding the Allies to make sure that they did not lose the war to the Central Powers. Finally, in October 1941, the Senate repealed the legislation that banned American ships from entering belligerent zones. It was inevitable that the U.S. was going to enter the war at some point. The president just had to wait for the right time to declare war. But before that happened, the U.S. created policies that showed that their favoritism was with the Allies. By siding with the Allies in the 1937 Neutrality Act, it caused the country to go to war. If the U.S. had stuck with its original Neutrality Act in 1935 and 1936, the U.S. would probably have not joined the war until much later, remaining an isolationist country for as long as possible. Being a neutral state in a time of war would have never worked because eventually they would either favor a side or the war would have come to them.